I think what's special about the Western National Parks is the Western United States. I mean, this is a landscape that's been celebrated in history, that's been celebrated in, in movies, uh, in books. Uh, it, it is the archetypal American landscape. When people come here from other countries, they think about the American West and what these landscapes actually signify and what they symbolize. So it's not by happenstance that the national parks that are most renowned are Yellowstone, Yosemite, and the Grand Canyon, and they're all in the West. They're all part of that Western landscape uh, and almost symbolize the rest of the American West. So uh, they're not just places. They're, they're, there's this iconography that's associated with Western national parks. The national parks of the United States are chapters in the book of America's legacy. They're a showcase of some of the world's greatest natural wonders. These lands contain the stories of our history and tell us what it means to be an American. They remind us why we should pass these stories on to future generations. In 1832, Western artist George Catlin envisioned a nation's park to preserve America's wilderness for future ages. Forty years later, the United States Congress created Yellowstone National Park in 1872. But it wasn't until 1916 that the National Park Service was created, an agency appointed with the challenging task of both protecting and promoting these American treasures for the benefit and enjoyment of all people. Today, nearly 400 parks and monuments can be found from the Pacific Coast to the Eastern Seaboard. Yet it was in the West where the sanctuaries of rugged beauty inspired the larger system and remain the most treasured to this day. When you're hiking on a trail in the Sierra Nevada, because you're in a national park, whether it be Sequoia National Park or Yosemite National Park, in general, you're seeing much of what John Muir would have seen, or what the Awanichi would have seen, or the Paiute would have seen. When you're floating down the Colorado River, today, on a raft trip, you're seeing essentially what John Wesley Powell saw. And you're seeing it because that area did become a national park. You can feel what they felt. You can see what John Wesley Powell saw. You can feel what John Muir felt when he was walking through a grove of giant sequoia. And that's the power of national parks. The Western United States is filled with hidden treasures of unparalleled beauty. Forests that have never been cut down. Rivers that have never been dammed. Rock formations that have never been disturbed. Wildlife that has never been tamed stories whose beginnings stretch back to before the age of the dinosaurs and have been protected so that they can be told to you.